Listen, it's quite simple. Press the free like button if you think that Rocky Maivia is about to turn Roman Reigns into the next Farouk. Because what I saw on SmackDown, like I said, they proved me right. Rocky is going to phase out Roman Reigns out of this group. Because Roman, man, he looked very, very irritated by his cousin. Why? Because Rocky is a natural showboat and a natural show-off. He wants all the spotlight. Roman don't like that. You see, that's what Farouk did not like about Rocky Maivia. He stole all the spotlight for the Nation of Domination. Listen, Rocky, he is a huge personality, man. He is nobody's sidekick. He can't be a background player for Roman Reigns long term. You can just, like I said, Rocky is going to make Roman look very, very uncool very, very soon. I mean, look at the wardrobe. It's like, man, he is trying his best to make Roman look bad. Roman looks like a bum compared to Rocky Maivia's wardrobe. That's my point. He's going to make him look uncool just like he did Farouk, and I can't wait. Now, when it comes to Drew Mack, the Mack attack, the Mack daddy, the return of the Mack, the Scottish psychopath. It's like, listen, man, when I call myself the best at what I do, I don't just say it as a catchphrase. I got proof and evidence. Nobody makes content like me. I give you facts and evidence that always comes true months later or days later or weeks later. People thought I was crazy when I made videos saying that Drew Mack is going to be the best heel of 2024. Okay, where are you at now? So I'm saying, what evidence do you have that I'm not the best at what I do? Bruh, I've been a fan of this product since 1992. I know how they think, I know how they book. But the point is, nobody was making content about Drew Mack, the Mack Daddy. The moment that CM Junk got injured, that's what I said, Drew Mack is going to be a world champion. That's what I said. Now look at him. Now people are trying to jump on the bandwagon because of me. I'm the one who put him over. I saw this coming. The moment he said he prayed for CM Junk to get injured, I said, yeah, this guy is going to be a world champion based off that comment. The fact that CM Junk allowed him to say that, that means that CM Junk handpicked Drew Mack to replace him at this year's WrestleMania because he's seen that Drew Mack was floundering in that mid card. Now look at him. Drew Mack is back to being a top three guy in the company. He's the hottest guy right now in the company. Like I said, I predicted this. Like I said, I made multiple, multiple videos, right? And I said that Drew Mack is going to face Seth Freaky Rollins at this year's WrestleMania. Hmm. I said that weeks ago. I said that the moment CM Junk got injured, I was the only guy on YouTube, online, or anywhere else that made that prediction. Nobody saw it coming. You marks thought it was going to be Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes. I'm like, no. Actually, y'all thought it was going to be Guvernadel versus Seth. I'm like, nah, bro. It's going to be Drew Mack. But I had these dumbass naysayers, right? It's like, I hate when this happens. When I'm right, nobody comes back to my page to tell me that I'm right. But if they think that I'm wrong, they will come back to my page. Example, Cody Rose last year. I'm like, bro, y'all some fucking cowards. Why don't you come back when I'm right? Oh, right, because that would be every day. Because I'm always right. I was right about the rise of Drew Mack. Now people are saying he's the hottest guy in the business. Like I said he would. Bruh, people are buying those shirts with the fucking tombstone of CM Junk. People are buying those shirts. Hell, Drew Mack is the best promo right now in all of fake pro wrestling. That's how hot he is because he keeps burying CM Junk and I love every minute of it. It's great shit. Um, but I think that this run of 2024 of Drew Mack, the Mac Daddy, this run is the best run of his career. And I think this is a redemption story that's better than his first one that, that he, he always talks about. Like, he always talks about how he came back, right? And he came back to NXT. Bro, 
this comeback is better than his run down in NXT. Remember when he left the company for like four or fucking three years? Remember he, um, I think he was in TNA? Then he came back, right? No, this trumps all that. The year of 2024, I think Drew Mack should write a fucking book about this year. Because man, he was at the bottom. People don't know this guy was at the bottom of the card for his name. It's like people lost faith in him. All right, so people were saying, why would we take Drew Mack seriously against Seth at this year's WrestleMania if he lost multiple times, okay? I said, okay, by that same logic, why would we take Seth Rollins seriously against Cody Rhodes in any match if Cody Rhodes beat him three times in a row, right? Once again, you can't answer me, right? Why the fuck would we take Seth seriously against Cody Rhodes when Cody beat him three times in a row? But, dog, at least Drew Mack has a different character now. He has a different gimmick. Drew Mack is a heel. He's a big, he's a bad guy. Seth Rollins, he's the same goofy ass joker that Cody Rhodes beat two years ago. <laughs> There's no difference. At least Drew Mack has evolved. Drew Mack is a fucking dick. This dude is an asshole. He's a jerk. This is a new man. So those so those L's that Drew Mack took against Seth, those don't count. That was a different Drew Mack who was confused who didn't know who, who he was. Okay, that was the sword, Drew Mack. That was the cringe, corny, Drew Mack. That was the Hulk Hogan cosplay, Drew Mack. That was a garbage, whack-ass Drew Mack that Vince McMahon created in his image, right? So, bro, that don't count. That Drew Mack was a, was a fucking loser. He didn't know who he was yet. Now he knows. Drew Mack, is a super saiyan right now this dude has evolved it's like bro apples and oranges from drew mac of last year to this year so yes this is a brand new matchup for this year's wrestlemania brand new matchup this is a new vicious drew mac that's why people are excited about this rematch because this is a new and improved Drew Mac, the Mac Daddy, the Mac Attack, the Return of the Mac, the Scottish Psychopath. That's my fucking point. So you can't say, oh, why would people be hyped about this match if Drew Mac lost? Bruh, that's that's fucking old news. The fuck? <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? That was old news, bro. This is a brand new Drew Mac who's going to beat Seth Rollins. Like I said in, in past videos. Drew Mack is going to beat this guy. But let's go back to his first year on the main roster with Dolph Ziggler. Now, I said that this year is the best year of his career because I will say years prior, man, he was up and down on the main roster. Um, Vince did not know how to push him. He was a guy that was on top of the mid-card but Vince didn't want to pull the trigger yet, right? He was that kind of guy. He was a guy that was always trying to put over Finn Balor or Seth or uh, Lashley, guys like that. Like, I would say when he was with Dolph Ziggler, Lashley, Corbin, Shane McMahon, he was a Mick Carter. Um, so let's fast forward to when Roman Reigns came back from cancer. Drew Mack had to put him over at WrestleMania, remember? Then, Drew Mack was the lackey of Shane McMahon. Remember? So, that's my point. That's what I mean by the year of 2024 is a better redemption story for Drew Mack compared to his first year with the company. Back in, what, 2017, 2016, that era. This Drew Mack, this is a better redemption story because people wrote him off after he got beaten by Roman Reigns at the Clash of the Castle. Like I said, I told people, it's going to take Drew Mack at least one year to recover from that burial of Roman fucking Reigns. And I was spot on. Now, it's weird because after he got beaten by Roman Reigns, man, he was a Mick Carter. 
I mean, everybody lost faith in Drew Mack, right? Um, I remember uh, he was with Sheamus, right? Yeah. This dude was tag team partners with Sheamus. They were called the fucking Bang Bros. <laughs> I mean, Drew Mack was at the bottom of the barrel. It's like, that's my point. This is a redemption story. This dude was with the Brawling Brutes. He goes from that to now he's about to beat Seth Rollins for the world title at this year's WrestleMania. That is a very great story because he did not quit. He did not give up. Because this dude could have said, fuck it. I'm going to all elite fake pro wrestling. So I could prove Triple H wrong. But he didn't. This dude stayed patient. The fact that this dude was a fucking Mick Carter man for a whole year after Reigns beat him and he never cried about it. He never bitched about it. He never complained. He stayed patient. It's like, man, the fact that Seth Rollins is the first world champion for that title and it was not Drew Mack, I'm like, wow, that's crazy. So that's my point. Drew Mack had to suffer and watch all these guys that he's better than steal his spotlight for the past two years. But let's go back to when he was the pandemic world champion. Like, honestly, man, that was a bad run. I don't, I don't care what anybody else says. That was a bad run because he was forced. Everything felt forced. He was not natural. That's why he was he was booed at WrestleMania against Bobby Lashley. Right, remember? Because Drew Mack was corny, he was cringe, he was a product of Vince McMahon. That's why he was booed. Um, that run at the fucking bubble, man, he was, man, he was so whack. Um, but I blame Vince. I blame Vince because he was feeding Drew Mack corny, cringe promos. So my point is, when did Drew Mack ever have a good run on the main roster before 2024? Because during those pandemic years, those were not good years. That's my point. And those years prior, he was a fucking Mick Carter who was lost in the shuffle and Vince McMahon did not believe in him. Like honestly, you can make an argument that I don't think Vince McMahon would have made him a world champion if it wasn't for the pandemic. I'm just speaking facts, right? Because once the pandemic hit, bro, there was nobody else. He was the only best option available at that time. But if we were never under the pandemic, bro, I don't think Drew Mack would have beaten Brock Lesnar at that WrestleMania. I'm just being real because I don't think this man ever had faith in, Drew, in fucking Drew Mack. The fact that Drew Mack has never beaten Roman Reigns, that means that this man never had faith in Drew Mack. So why would he make Drew Mack a world champion if Roman Reigns was healthy at that time? Because cause I think uh, I think Roman actually went home. I remember during the pandemic, Roman Reigns, he actually stayed home. So they had no choice but to push Drew Mack at that time because Roman stayed home during the pandemic. So <laughs> Vince had no choice but to push the next new star. But if Roman never went home, there's no way in hell Vince would have made Drew Mack a world champion. So that's my point. This is Drew Mack's best year on the main roster because now he looks more comfortable. Now he's free. He's no longer under the control of Vince McMahon. There's no more fucking sword. There is no more corny ass promos that were being fed by Vince McMahon to Drew Mack. So the point I'm trying to make is Drew Mack always talks about how, yeah, he was gone for like four years and then he came back. Nah, nah, bro. This is a better redemption story for you. Because you was at the bottom of the barrel before 2024, but Drew Mack stayed patient. And now he's back to being a top three guy. I mean, dude, this dude pinned Cody fucking Rhodes. 
the fact that he pinned Cody Rhodes, that means they got faith in you back. And that means that he resigned. <laughs> That's what that means. But listen, I'm very, very proud of Drew Mack, the Mac Daddy. So if we are going to compare the Drew Mack from NXT to now, no, nah, bro, this is a better comeback. Better comeback. Dude, people are saying, will this guy leave? But he didn't. He stayed patient. He stayed patient and he had faith in Triple H that Triple H was going to do right by him. But he has to thank CM Junk. Dude, where would you <laughs> where would you back be if it wasn't for CM Junk? It's like, man, CM Junk, he turned around the career of Drew Mack. So, hey, listen, we got to give CM Junk a round of applause for that. All right, so let's look back at the timeline of Drew Mack, the Mack Daddy. So, he returns to NXT. Then he goes back to the main roster, and he is the sidekick of Dolph Ziggler. Then he leaves Dolph Ziggler, and then he starts a faction with Lashley and Baron Corbin. And then those three guys, they were jobbing out to the fucking shield, remember? Okay, then Drew Mack, he leaves that group. Then he goes to be with Shane McMahon. So this dude becomes Shane's lackey. Then he gets beaten by Roman fucking Reigns at WrestleMania. Then I think, I think maybe like a year later, he beats Brock, I think, right? But it was in the fucking pandemic when nobody cared. And I felt like Drew Mack had a bad run in that bubble. So he drops the belt to Bobby Lashley, I think, right? I think so. Um, then, dude, ever since he dropped that belt, I'm like, dude, this dude has been floundering. Before 2024, he was floundering. And then Reigns beat him at Clash of the Castle. And then Gunther, he beat him at WrestleMania for the IC title. And then, I think months later, Seth Rollins beats Drew Mack for the world title, I think twice. So that's my point. This is a redemption story for Drew Mack. He's back to being where he should be, which is a top guy at the top of the company, a top three guy. That's the point. And yes, Drew Mack, he will beat Seth Rollins at this year's WrestleMania. Okay, I'm done.